Hi, first graders. Welcome back. This is week six, day five. For today's lesson, you will need your thinking cap, your listening ears, a pencil, your crayons, and your modules three and four EL workbook. If you don't have your materials ready, just press pause. Then press play when you're ready to learn. Hopefully you have your materials ready to go. Set your materials off to the side because we won't need them until the end of our lesson. During our day three lesson, we discussed this verbs, shades of meaning anchor chart. On this far side, we have all of the birds. Then we have verbs that describe what the birds do. For example, a sparrow can break or crack a seed to eat it. Now, crack and break are similar verbs, but we know that break is stronger because it's on the stronger verb side. While these verbs are good, but they're a little weaker. Let's practice reading and understanding verbs by doing a little verb game. Stand up wherever you are. Once you see the arrow on my screen, try to act out that verb. Let's start with the verb hop or leap. A sparrow can hop or leap. All right, little sparrow, show me how you would act out these verbs. <laughs> Good job. Let's try cut or tear. A macaw might cut or tear with its beak. Act out these verbs. Good job. Let's try close or snap. In our text, we learn that a skimmer uses its beak to glide through the water and then it closes or snaps its beak shut on fish. Show me how you would close or snap your beak. Good job. Good job acting out all of those verbs. We're able to act them out because verbs are usually action words. Now that your body and your mind are warmed up and ready to learn, have a seat in your chair and let's look at our learning targets for today. Our first target is that target that we have been working so hard on. It says, I can research information about different types of bird beaks using the text beaks. We've been going through that text beaks, stopping on each page, and researching the types of beaks that we see. We'll continue that work today and we'll add to our beaks chart. After that's done, we'll move on to the second target. The second target says, I can explain the purpose of a spoonbill's beak using pictures and words. Let's start with our research. We started working with this chart a few lessons back, all the way in week five. And now here, the next week, we have it almost full. Let's continue to add to this chart as we continue to read through the text, Beaks. I'll give you a moment to look at that illustration to see what the beak is doing. Try to follow along as I read the text. A stabbing beak. Herons. A heron also wades, but it hunts differently than a spoonbill. A heron walks slowly through the shallows pausing frequently to study the water. 
When it sees a fish or other animal, the heron quickly stabs its beak into the water and seizes its prey between its bills. Herons are strong birds and can catch and swallow surprisingly large fish and other animals. Wow, can you tell me, how does the heron use its beak? That's right, the heron stabs its beak into the water to catch its prey. Let's add heron onto our beaks chart. First, describe that beak for me using the heading. What kind of beak does the heron have? That's right, our heading says a stabbing beak. So on our chart, we'll add long stabbing. How does that long stabbing beak help the heron to survive? Yep, it reaches food quickly. It darts its beak into the water to catch their prey. Let's add a picture of a heron's beak to help us remember. Our next bird is a pelican. I'll give you a moment to observe. Try to follow along with me as I read the text. A plunging beak. Pelicans. A pelican fishing is one of nature's most thrilling spectacles. When a pelican spots a fish, the bird folds its wings and dives straight down at speeds of up to 40 miles per hour. As the pelican crashes open mouth into the water, the pouch on its lower bill puffs out to net its prey. After the water drains from the pouch, the pelican swallows its meal. But only if a sneaky seagull doesn't eat it first. Wow, that's exciting. Do you see the pelican in flight at the top of the page? The pelican dives quickly into the water and lets the bottom pouch of its beak open up so that it can catch fish. Then it tilts its head back and swallows its prey. Wow. Let's add the pelican to our chart. By reading the heading, we can learn what the page is about. So can you tell me, how would you describe the pelican's beak? Mm -hmm. I would say it's a plunging beak or it has a pouch, right? And how does this pouch or this plunging beak help the pelican to survive? Mm -hmm. It scoops fish, right? And of course we can't forget, we need to add a picture. Look at how long the pelican's beak is. And if you look closely at that picture, you can see how the bottom part of the beak is quite stretchy so that the pouch can grow to help the, or not grow, but it can swell so that the fish has room when it scoops up and picks up the fish. Let's go to one more page in this text to fill out our chart. Ooh, look at this one. I'll give you a moment to look at the illustration.
Try to follow along with me as I read the text. A prying beak. Crossbills. A crossbill looks like it would starve to death with its screwball beak. However, the cross tips of its beak allow the bird to pry apart the scales of pine cones and other cones. This exposes the cone seeds, which the crossbill laps up with its sticky tongue. Despite their strange beaks, crossbills also eat fruit, insects, and the seeds of other plants. Wow, do you see the crossbill's beak? The crossbill uses its beak to pry open these pine cones to get the seeds inside. Let's add the crossbill's beak onto our chart. How would you describe the beak? I would say the beak is cross-tipped. Do you agree? Okay, and how does this crossbill use that cross-tipped, and cross-tipped just means that if you look really closely at the beak, you can see that the edges about cross. That's why they're called crossbills. How does this bird use its beak to survive? What does it do with its beak? Mm-hmm. The crossbill pries across the pine cone. So it pries open that pine cone looking for seeds, right? And let's put in a little picture at the bottom to show the crossbill beak. Wow, look at all of those beaks. There are 10 beaks. They all look different and they have different jobs. I'd say that we can cross off our first learning target. We were able to research information about different types of bird beaks using our text, Beaks. Now let's move on to our second learning target. Our second learning target says, I can explain the purpose of a spoonbill's beak using pictures and words. Hmm, a spoonbill's beak. Can you picture that beak in your mind? If you're having a hard time, look at this photograph from our chart. Let's prepare for our independent work by turning to page 19 in our EL workbook. You'll know you're there when it looks like this. If you need more time finding page 19, just pause the video and press play when you found it. Okay, for page 19, let's read the instructions. At the top it reads, Birds Research Notebook, part two, page six. Spoonbill beak. Add a detailed spoonbill beak to the silhouette below. So all you're having to add is that funny shaped spoonbill beak. Then you will label the beak and answer the question at the bottom of the workbook page. What is the purpose of this beak? You'll write a complete sentence answering that question. I've added in a detailed photograph of a real spoonbill. Take a moment to really closely observe this beak. Then, on your workbook page, add a detailed spoonbill beak to the silhouette of the bird. And don't forget to tell us the purpose of this beak. 
Remember, the spoonbill puts its head under the water and it stirs up the, that's right, the mud. I will leave this on your screen so that you have a moment to get started on your observational drawing. You can always press pause if you need more time to look closely at the photograph. I'll see you next time. Bye friends.